you're an astronaut, you're in deep space and uh, you're just bored. You have a ball in your hand and then you throw the ball. There's nothing around you, it's empty, lonely space. And the ball is going with some velocity. Velocity is just, you know, another word for speed for now. And it's going. Now, what's going to happen to that ball? And here are the options I want you to think about. Option number one is that that ball will keep going for a while and then slow down and then slow down and then stop. Uh, that's what's going to, that's going to be the future of this ball. Option number two is that that ball's going to slow down and slow down and slow down, but never ever stop. Even if you come back after a million years, this ball will have some tiny little speed that it's going with. Option number three is that this ball is going to keep going forever and ever and ever with the same speed that it had when it left your hand. You know, you pushed it, it's going to keep having that speed. If it had some 40 kilometers per hour speed right now, that's the speed it'll have. Even if you come back after a million years, maybe the hu human race doesn't exist, but the ball will be going at 40 kilometers per hour. Which of these three do you think is going to be the future of the ball? Now, did you think about that question? Did you discuss it? Now, if you go back to 384 BC and ask Aristotle what will happen to that ball, Aristotle will be like, oh, I know the answer. The ball will stop. It will slow down and slow down and it'll stop. And he'll say, why? He will tell you that it's because the natural state of objects is to be at rest. Look around. Everything is naturally at rest. So the natural state of things is to be at rest. So if you move them from that position of being at rest, they will come back to that natural position of being at rest. And the way he would actually call this what we did to that body, violent motion. So the natural motion is to come back to rest. The violent motion is you take it and push it. That's violence. But even if you do something violently to that body, it will come back and stop. That's what Aristotle would tell you. He would believe that the object stops. But if you go to something like the 16th century and then you ask Galileo, hey, what do you think would happen? In the 2000 years that passed, Galileo would say, you know what? I believed what Aristotle told me like 2000 years ago. All of us did. And then we believed that objects naturally stop. But you know what happened recently? I've been getting this thing called glass and I've been building this thing that I've not really told too many people. It's called a telescope and I've been looking at things far away. And you know what? I'm beginning to doubt this guy Aristotle. I'm beginning to notice that when I look far away, things don't really look like their natural state is to stop. I mean, I saw that there are all these planets, all these objects, they're all moving for a long time, right? I even saw Jupiter has some moons and even those are moving. All these things seem to be moving. It doesn't look like they want to stop. Maybe that ball that you throw in space, if I could ever go to space and throw a ball, maybe it wouldn't stop at all. Maybe it'll keep going forever and ever and ever. Do you know why I believe this? Galileo will then tell you a thought experiment. He'll try to convince you with a thought experiment because it's the cheapest form of an experiment. It requires no money at all because it's all in your head. He'll tell you, imagine this with me, no? Imagine I take a ball on an inclined plane, basically anything like a bowl, and then I drop it. Doesn't it kind of come back to the top? In fact, if I make it smooth, it kind of comes back almost exactly to the top. Like the only reason it doesn't come back sometimes is if it's rough, you know, like it stops. So if I make it smooth, it's coming back. You know what I've been thinking about these days? I've been thinking if I take that ball and drop it, and if I make the bowl kind of longer, right, it's going to go all the way and then come back up. And if I make it even longer, I feel like it'll go all the way there and come back up again. But what if I take this and make it infinitely long? Then if I drop the ball, it'll have to go forever and ever and ever, like thousand kilometers, and then it has to come up, right? Then it has to cover all that thousand. What if I make it like 10,000? What if I make it a million? Wouldn't the ball keep going and then go up? In other words, I don't think the ball wants to stop. I think Aristotle is wrong. He saw balls stopping around him and that's why he thought that balls want to stop. But actually balls don't want to stop. They just keep going forever and ever and ever. Just like the heavenly bodies that we see. right? The earth has been going forever and ever and ever. The moon is going around us forever. It's not stopping. Maybe objects don't want to stop. And uh, which of these two would you believe? Aristotle would have told you this, Galileo would have told you this. It turns out that Galileo is right. Galileo found by doing this thing called an experiment, a thought experiment, and by combining it with what he saw in the world, that objects actually don't want to stop on their own. 
the natural state of objects is not to stop, but it's to keep whatever velocity they have, they want to keep that. So he stated this, he called this thing inertia. Right? What is this thing inertia? Hey, if you leave an object with some velocity, it will always have that velocity, no matter what. Unless somebody externally does something to it, by itself, it doesn't want to change its velocity at all. If it's at rest, it wants to remain at rest. If it's going at 20 kilometers per hour, it wants to remain at 20 kilometers per hour. If it's going at 40, it wants to remain at 40. No matter what, it wants to stay at that. He called that inertia. Now, this might be giving you the answer to the question we began with, right? What is the question? What will happen to that ball? Galileo would say it will keep going forever and ever and ever. And he is right. He's right. The ball will neither stop, nor will it slow down and slow down and slow down, but never stop. It will keep the same velocity for millions of years. But why should you believe me? Maybe Galileo is wrong. That's exactly what you would think as a scientist, right? Hey, okay, Galileo, but why should I believe you? He would have given you a thought experiment, but is that enough? Now, after 350 years or so, in fact, more than that, uh, we were able to actually throw a ball into space, a ball called Voyager. It's a shuttle that left the Earth, left the atmosphere where there's all these rocks to stop it. It just went into space. There's nothing around it, no forces on it, nothing at all. From there, this Voyager that's a ball in space has had the same velocity that it had. You know, I think it travels around 16 kilometers every second. It's been traveling at that speed for the last, it went in 1990, so Voyager 2, so it's been 2000, 2000, about like 30 years now that it's been going with the same speed, same velocity. It's left the solar system. We've, been, we've said bye to it. The, it's the first man-made thing that's actually left the solar system. So we are seeing 350 years or more after Galileo that what he said was right. Objects do keep going forever and ever and ever. But then you might ask, hey, what about the things on Earth? Let's, let's look at something. You're in a bus, there's a brake, then you, you go forward. Why are you doing that? Because your body wants to keep the velocity. So you're beginning to see that, hey, Galileo was kind of right. We didn't have to wait for these many years. Now think of another experience. I have a favorite episode of Tom and Jerry called uh, The Bowling Alley Cat, in which there's a smooth bowling alley into which first Jerry uh, ends up like sliding. I'm going to show you a video of that and I'm going to ask you a question after that. Did you, did you see that? I just love the music on this one. So what happens here is that Jerry on Earth is going on a smooth bowling alley, skating on it, but he stops. Just like any object you would take, right? If I had taken some object like my phone and if I had pushed it on a table, it would have gone and stopped, right? Anything at all. Why is Jerry stopping then? Which of these explanations would you pick? Jerry stopping by himself uh, because that's the natural state of Jerry or is something external? Somebody else stopping Jerry. Which of these do you think is happening? And can you give an explanation using the words that we just learned? Yeah, what's really happening is somehow Jerry ends up having a velocity. He's on the bowling alley and he's moving. But he's not stopping because his natural state is to stop. What does he have now? He has inertia, right? He's moving. He would have kept that velocity. Kept sliding forever and ever and ever. If only this, this bowling alley was so smooth that nothing stopped him. He would have kept going forever. Which is why he can't do this on a carpet, right? If he'd done this on a carpet, it would have stopped immediately. So it would have gone forever and ever and ever. But what's stopping him? The ground, right? The ground has some roughness. Even if you make it smooth, there's some roughness. And that's basically scraping against his poor bum. And then he's stopping. We call that kind of scraping actually friction. So that's what's stopping him. If not, he would have kept going forever and ever and ever. So if an object is stopping on Earth, is it stopping because its natural state is to stop? No, it's not. It's stopping because somebody external is stopping it and it's always there. This thing called friction is always there. Even if you just are going through the air, air molecules are stopping you. They're kind of hitting against you and stopping you. We call that drag force. So the problem with why this is so hard for us to understand that objects will keep going forever and ever and ever, right? Why it's hard for us to do is because on Earth that never happens. It never happens because there's always a force that's stopping you when you're moving. It's called the drag force or the friction force, which is why we think Galileo was like a genius to figure this out because he could connect what was happening outside to what was happening inside. So why does Jerry stop? Jerry stops because there is an external force called friction. If not, he would have the inertia forever. Now what I want you to do is take this new idea. I've been repeating this actually many times in this, in this time that we had, right? That what? 
objects keep moving forever and ever and ever with the same velocity until something external comes and stops them. Similarly, an object that's not moving never moves until something external pushes it. Right? Why am I saying this so many times? Because this is actually one of the most fundamental ideas we can ever learn. It's called the law of inertia. It's just a big word for telling what I told. A object that's at rest will be that way. Object that's already moving at the velocity will keep moving that way. Now, this law of inertia also has a really another really famous name. It's called Newton's first law of motion. This is Newton's first law of motion. So congrats, you know Newton's first law of motion. Now you might be wondering, all of the work seems to be Galileo's. Isn't it supposed to be Galileo's law of motion? Yeah, it could have been, except that Newton looked at it and went, you know what Galileo, you did all this work. I know you figured it out. You figured out that objects have inertia and they don't, they don't want to stop. They want to keep going uh, and they'll keep going forever. But you know what? I have these other two laws and I don't want to call it Galileo's first law and Newton's other two laws. Eh, I'm just going to call it Newton's three laws, man. I'm going to steal your law. That's kind of what Newton did. He just stole Galileo's law and uh, made it his own. It could have, should have been called Galileo's first law of motion, but it's today Newton's first law of motion. So Newton just stole it from Galileo. So that's it. That's Galileo's first law or actually Newton's first law for you. And you know that right now, you can put it into your tool bag and use it, which is what I want you to do in the rest of this unit. The entire unit, the entire season of episodes that we're going to have is going to be about taking this one single idea that, hey, object has inertia, any object has inertia, and you need forces to change its velocity. Inertia is the property where they keep that velocity, and you need something external, a force external to change that velocity. We're going to do so many things to keep coming back to this single idea, so that you become a master of Newton's first law. And how are you going to do that? What questions are you going to answer in that process? You're going to answer questions like, why do we have headrests in cars? Is it for comfort or is it for safety? You're going to ask, can you actually possibly ever touch anything? Is it possible to touch anything at all? You're also going to build um, an Among Us character or any character that you want and implement force in our coding toy world that we've been building, the physics engine, and implement force in it and show how forces behave with real objects. You're going to take that what happens in the real world and build it into your coding toy world. You're going to do that as well. And you're going to have a few more questions like, hey, can you actually prove this Newton's first law that I told you, that objects have inertia and they keep going? Can you prove it? If you can't, should you believe it? If you can, how? Questions like these are what's hidden for you in the next station. So in the coming station, I want you to take some of these questions around Newton's first law, play with them, come up with your own explanations using the word inertia, using your, the idea of inertia and Newton's first law to explain what's really going on in them. And that's how you will learn.